Imagine it's a Wednesday afternoon. It is just after 5 p.m., close of the business day. You are one of thousands of people transiting through New York City's Grand Central Terminal. You are in the huge, cavernous main terminal of Grand Central. And like everyone, you're looking up at the arrivals board for when your train home is due. The Harlem, Hudson, New Haven lines, the Metro North. And at 5.07 p.m. on that Wednesday, as you and a zillion other weary commuters are looking up at that board, this happens. The arrivals board taken over by a huge black banner, all of a sudden shouting activists everywhere. It says one AIDS death every eight minutes. This is January 23rd, 1991. The United States was at that moment in the midst of going to war in Iraq and Kuwait in Gulf War I. And in Grand Central Terminal, the place is just taken over. This banner mounted on balloons. It says money for AIDS, not for war, it goes up to the ceiling of Grand Central. Huge crowd of activists there. Ultimately, 263 AIDS activists would be arrested that day when they moved on, marching to the headquarters of the UN. They had marched on Wall Street that morning. The night before, the same activists had disrupted the CBS Nightly News with Dan Rather. They're saying fight AIDS, not Arabs. Mr. Rather came back on camera. He apologized for the eruption in the studio and the rudeness of the protesters. And then he resumed his newscast talking about the Gulf War. Those same protesters also got into the studios at the PBS nightly newscast that night, tried to chain themselves to one of the anchors. Uh, they tried and failed to get into the NBC nightly newscast. Six months before that day, that same group of protesters had launched a massive protest at the National Institutes of Health. Watch Tom Brokaw here. This was a major day of protest by AIDS activists in this country, 1,000 of them converging on the National Institutes of Health outside of Washington, demanding more research on the disease. 81 were arrested. NBC science correspondent Robert Bazell has more tonight on a group that is taking the AIDS struggle to the streets and beyond that. Today's demonstration is the latest of many staged by the militant group ACT UP, which has gained increasing influence on AIDS policies. The weekly meetings of the New York chapter attract hundreds, and the loosely knit organization counts 10,000 members nationwide, mostly young, mostly gay. Let's do a big demonstration there and keep it there. The atmosphere at the meetings and at the group's headquarters is characterized by enthusiasm and belligerence toward established institutions. Playwright Larry Kramer started ACT UP to accelerate the AIDS drug approval process. What right does the FDA and the NIH have to tell a dying person what he or she can do with her or his body? ACT UP's tactics often offend. Many Catholics were angered by this demonstration at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York to criticize the church's opposition to homosexuality and condoms. Sometimes the group attacks individuals. ACT UP proclaimed that former New York City Health Commissioner Stephen Joseph was more dangerous than the AIDS virus. Well, I think their goals are the right ones and their tactics are very much the wrong ones. It's the brown shirt stormtrooper uh, unwillingness to see any other point of view and a willingness to condemn any other point of view as an evil one. I am so sick of hearing about our tactics offending people. Uh, the Vietnam War was not ended by people being nice. Uh, nice people walk into gas chambers. ACT UP members do more than demonstrate. Mark Harrington has made himself an expert on AIDS, and he serves on an NIH advisory committee, even though he helped organize today's demonstration. Well, I call that the inside-outside strategy that I think ACT UP does really well. ACT UP's strategy has been enormously successful in getting the Food and Drug Administration to loosen the regulation of new drugs for AIDS. Now the activists are trying to force scientists to work faster to develop and test new treatments. In the past, scientists have strongly resisted such pressure. ACT UP thinks the scientists can be made to listen. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Bethesda.
That was in May of 1990, that report. Just a few months earlier, in the fall of 1989, seven members of the same protest group had chained themselves to the balcony at the New York Stock Exchange at the opening bell. They unfurled a banner that said, Sell Welcome. Welcome was the company that made AZT, the only real AIDS drug available at that time. Available, technically, at a cost of $10,000 a year in 1989 dollars. The New York Stock Exchange had trading halted that day, I believe, for the first time that was not due to war time. The company dropped the price of AZT soon after the demonstration. The group that did all of this, of course, was ACT UP, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. ACT UP was founded 25 years ago this week at a speech in the spring of 1987 by playwright Larry Kramer at New York's Gay and Lesbian Center. The medical journals were writing about something that would later be called AIDS, uh, killing people in ever-increasing numbers as early as 1981. By 1987, by the time ACT UP was founded, more than 36,000 Americans had been diagnosed with AIDS, more than 20,000 Americans had died. And the president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, had never said the word AIDS in public. 20,000 dead Americans, all in his time in office, before he ever said a word about it. This week, to mark the 25th anniversary of the founding of ACT UP, one of the most effective activist groups in American history, longtime members of the group, some new supporters who they have gained from the Occupy protests, uh, they marched again on Wall Street, again, using the group's uh, trademark, rather badass graphics. They demanded a less than a penny toll, essentially a tiny tax on every Wall Street financial transactions. They want it to be used to finance medication and needed services for people with AIDS and to get access, get people access to health care. AIDS has killed more than 30 million people worldwide. Even in the United States right now, there are thousands of HIV-positive Americans on waiting lists for treatment, on waiting lists for what are called the AIDS drug assistance programs in the states, programs that do not have enough money to get HIV treatment to Americans who need it. In this country, in 2012, with adequate treatment and health care, living with HIV can be a chronic, manageable condition now. And that's mostly the way that we think of it in this country now. Even though around the world and even here at home, not everyone is there yet and, and more needs to be done. But the reason AIDS can be a chronic, manageable condition, the reason it is possible to imagine it ending, the reason ending it is within reach even now, in significant part is due to a very radical group called ACT UP which I belong to for a big defining chunk of my life before I was ever in media, and which has a deserved place in American history that a lot of people will try to ensure never gets told, but it will be told. Happy 25th birthday, ACT UP. You set out really aggressively and controversially to change the world, and you changed the world. That does it for us tonight, which is good, because you are totally late for prison.